Hello, everyone. Please let me know if you can hear me. Um, I'm happy to introduce Candace Bradley. She's with here today um, to give us a talk on visualizing diversity. Candace is an instructor and lead at Northwestern University, and we are super excited to have her um, and share her thoughts on in this platform today. Uh, excited to have you here, and I'll give it over to you. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I'm I'm an instructor at Northwestern University, which means that I work remotely, uh, and uh, um, I started started out at you know I was a tenured professor for a long time and an anthropologist. Now this is kind of weird. How does an anthropologist become a you know faculty member in a data science program? Uh, and does uh, because I'm a quantitative anthropologist, which is kind of a weird specialization. Um, and all that means is that I you know did field work and I also crunched data. Uh, and uh, I was trained in kind of a weird program uh, and that, you know, focuses a lot on uh, quanti quantification of, you know, basically anthropological data, which is really, you know, kind of an unusual thing. Um, anyway, so I, you know, teach in this uh, master's program in data science at Northwestern in the School of Professional Studies. And then courses I normally teach are um, the three that you see there, data science and research practice, data visualization, and data governance, ethics, and law. And, uh, you know, as the, you know, the last couple of years have been kind of strange with the pandemic and all that stuff, and, but it wasn't just the pandemic, it was also uh, Black Lives Matter and all kinds of like raising consciousness and people sort of waking up to the fact that uh, there was a lot of bias and inequity. Um, and especially at Northwestern, which is a very progressive place, um, there was a lot of consciousness of what it is that we're missing. Um, and one of the things that happened is that I was assigned this new class, Data Governance, Ethics, and Law, um, and it has two, two different versions. One of them we teach to students in the US who are very diverse at Northwestern anyway, and the other one is for students in India, and for that I get to get up at six o'clock in the morning, and I have a colleague in India who uh, co-leads that with me. And um, uh, the person who designed the course, um, um, you know, is is another colleague of mine, and um, um, the feeling was that you know by the time it got passed to me was that the course was very Eurocentric, and I was asked to go into the curriculum and make it less Eurocentric. And um, as I was doing that, I became aware that the other courses, um, and especially the data visualization course, were also very Eurocentric and and did not reflect the global student body and audience that were out there in the world. It didn't reflect data science at all. Okay, so this presented a big problem, and I have here three points, you know, about what those problems are. So the, you know, three things I see um, are the problem in terms of not having, uh, you know, not having di diverse data science and diverse visualizations. And let me just explain it this way. I'm going to kind of read these, which I don't normally do on PowerPoint slides, but you know, here we go, um, because it's important, I think, to to make it really clear what the um, issues are. First, uh, the data case studies and examples, uh, example visualizations in data science courses and manuals um, cover, come almost exclusively from the US, UK, and Europe and focus on the concerns of the dominant cultures and reflect the perspectives of the dominant cultures. Um, second, the authors of the leading data visualization manuals and textbooks that we use and that we tend to learn from um, in, you know, not just in classes, but also, you know, the ones that we get, get at Amazon and buy off the shelf are predominantly written by white authors, uh, usually male and from US, UK and Europe. And then finally, the third point, um, the contributions to data science from others in places besides the US, the UK, and Europe, um, and those in the non-dominant populations in the US um, and or in North America 
are largely unacknowledged and basically ignored. And that's the same goes for women's contributions uh, when the examples and everything are basically um, still those of men and in particular white men. Doesn't matter. Um, now, I, since, you know, I started introducing new stuff to my students in the to widening out what it is we were looking at, I found them to be extremely enthusiastic about this. Um, and, you know, one of the things we were talking about um, that uh, the, the presenter was talking about this morning was that um, um, as we work uh, remotely, um, that we, you know, begin to, uh, you know, that we might work asynchronously, right? And that, um, you know, the students in my classes have the option of going asynchronous and uh, they find out what it is that we're looking at. And all of a sudden they get really excited. And most of my students are, um, you know, they're graduate students. So they're going to be, you know, 22 um, to, you know, uh, 30. Some of them are in their 30s. Um, every once in a while I get a student who's older. Um, but most of the students are what you would call um, uh, Gen Zers and Millennials. Okay, so um, they're very open to looking at these perspectives and get very excited when you do it. Now, why does it matter? Well, you know, one of the things that I worry about um, when I start talking about this stuff is that some of my colleagues are going to go, you know, it really doesn't matter. And it really doesn't matter because, you know, we're really talking about methods and we're talking about, you know, techniques. And we're talking about coding and we're talking about how to do a good data visualization. It doesn't matter what, you know, th this other stuff that you're talking about because that's not going to give them these tools that we're looking for. But it's not trivial and it does matter. And it matters because when our... Um, uh, sources of data and our our data visualizations all come from the same place in the same group of people or similar people that we overlook uh, folks who uh, and perspectives that that uh, are, are not dominant perspectives um, and we introduce bias okay and the students in these classes who are from all over the world and i have a huge number it's like my classes are often minority white north american anglo um, are from india china south america uh, africa um, slavic countries uh, and they represent different ethnic groups races genders uh, and abilities, okay? And so it's important that we introduce this kind of uh, information among these groups and to uh, make it uh, okay to, um, uh, under, to present and to explore data, data sources and visualizations uh, from uh, non-dominant cultures, okay? And um, so um, one of the things that, you know, I was thinking about was what texts we use. And these are not just texts, these are books that people, you know, have in their houses when they're interested in learning about data visualization. And these are uh, the ones that are, seem to be the most popular textbooks from what I uh, have seen. And these are the ones that we actually use in this program at Northwestern. And of course, there's Edward Tufte. Um, Tufte is from the US, his nickname is ET and he is now 80 years old uh, and he is wonderful. There is Andy Kirk, who is also wonderful. He's from the UK, he's 46 years old. Um, there's Cole Nussbaumer, who I, whose age is not anywhere to be found, but you know, she's gotta be a millennial uh, from, you know, from the evidence. And then there is Stephen Few, who uh, is from the U.S. And Stephen Few uh, has on his own bio uh, as saying that he uses an ellipse uh, and does not present everything about himself. In fact, he never talks about anything about himself. And so his age is an ellipse and that's what he wants. Okay, so uh, here is the first poll. And uh, the question is, have you attended a Tufty course? Um, and uh, that's going to be posted in the polls. So it'd be interesting to um, uh, hear what you have to say about that. Um, how is that, uh, how am I going to find out about that? Are you going to give me the results? Because I'm- Yeah, everyone can see the poll and they can go ahead and enter their answers and we can all see the results. 
Okay, should we wait a second here? Yeah, let's let's wait for five seconds. Okay, do you want me to? I can actually switch over to the other view. So get out of the slides. Okay, there's the poll. Okay, so how do we see the results of this? Well, Bobby, will you see the results? Yeah. Okay. I am. Okay, there we go. Okay, so 79% um, have not attended a Tufty course. 16% uh, <laughs> say it was Edward Tufty, which I'm going to talk about. And then, yes, 4%, uh, and I'm really surprised about that. Um, it was like, actually one of the first conversations I had with my to then to be husband in uh, in grad school <laughs> was about him having attended an Edward Tufty course. Okay, so back to the screen. Okay, so um, who is Edward Tufty? Okay, so Edward Tufty is if you go on on Google and you Google Edward Tufty. Um, you will uh, see something like the father of, you know, the query, the answer to the query will cop, come up the father of data visualization on the Google page. Or if you Google the, who is the father of data visualization, you will get Edward Tufty. Now, even the, even the question is funny because, you know, we don't have like the mother of data visualization. We have the father of data visualization. Um, and, uh, but, um, you know, here's a, you know, he's also called the guru of graphics and the high priest of presentation. Uh, again, he is 80 years old. He is a statistician, author, and sculptor. Um, he's had lots of influences. Uh, he went to Yale. He taught at Yale. Um, he uh, graduated, he left in 1999 and was professor emeritus. He still is, I guess. And um, he is really well known for his scathing critiques of PowerPoints and bullet points and pie charts and having lots of little tchotchkes in your data visualizations. And here I am and I should be hanging my head in shame for using a PowerPoint. And I actually have bullets lists on my PowerPoint. So we're not going to tell Tufty that I'm doing this. Um, his books present all kinds, and he's got wonderful books. And one of those is the information, I'm um, sorry, is um, the visual display of quantitative information. Um, that's the best known one. And he talks about um, in their examples, like really great historical examples. And one of the most famous is Menard's visualization of Napoleon's failed Russia campaign. And I talk about this in my classes. And you know, it's a really neat, and it's, it's in French. Okay, because Menard was French, um, but um, you know there's lots of discussion of it, and it's one of the most iconic visualizations uh, historically. Um, okay, so um, so more about Tufty. Tufty, uh, there was like there's one author whose name is Camoas, um, who uh, compares Tufty and Stephen Few, who's one of the other authors whose picture I showed, um, to God and Moses. Okay, and in the sense that Stephen Few and, and Tufty are often talked about in the same breath, and he says, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, Few interprets Tufty like Moses interprets God, and that's how people think about Edward Tufty. Okay, Tufty is seen as the god of data visualization, and what he says goes. Okay, and then um, Camoas asks, what are Tufty and or few missing? What pieces do we need for a 21st century visualization? And one of the things that we need for a 21st century visualization, I think, and you know, I'd like to know if, if you know what you think in the comments, um, is um, uh, that we need to diversify our visualizations, that we need to have data and data visualizations that look like us, okay, or that look like you. And that's basically what I'm going to, to say here. Okay, so one of the other uh, uh, photos that I had there was of Cole Newsbaumer and Affleck, and some of you may know this, um, this is really famous, a uh, storytelling with data, and then she has a manual, you know, a, a workbook version. Um, and who is she? Uh, and it's like actually one of the iconic, or one of the most used uh, quote textbooks for data visualization is written by a woman. Okay, and this is her. 
um, she has an organization called Storytelling with Data, and there's the link if you want to go take a look at it. Um, and there's some of her books I've got there. Um, she's a blogger, a podcaster. She leads workshops, and she teaches thousands of people every year. Um, author, of course, data visualization professional. Um, she was trained, you know, here at the University of Washington, would you believe, and um, has a BA in mathematics and an MBA. And now she lives, you know, uh, um, elsewhere in the country. She was in the Midwest. Um, and uh, that's Cole Nussbaumer on uh, Netflix. Okay, and it's worth looking at her website. I encourage you to go look at her website because you'll see what who is on her team and what they're about. And one of the things that that the, uh, they talk about um, is, uh, you know, what's their mission statement? Um, helping rid the world of ineffective graphs, one 3D pie at a time. And she and also um, uh, Stephen Few, uh, along with Tufty, spent a lot of time talking about how awful pie charts are. Okay, so here is poll number two. Uh, how do you feel about pie charts? Uh, and um, do you want to take over that? Here you go. There is another poll. Okay, okay, I'll give another 10 seconds for people okay. to quickly put in their votes. This is a good one. Um, you like this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's always up for discussion. Yes, it is. And actually, there are people who argue for it. And I think you could do a pie chart well. Um, but... Um, you know. Yeah, I, I see the polls coming in pretty close, so I think it will be fun. Okay. Okay, I'm going to close this in the next five seconds. Please go ahead. Okay, so you're going to, are you going to show the results? <laughs> there we go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I agree with Tough Day. I don't use them, and we have 41%. Uh, I use pie charts and they can be uh, used effectively uh, 41. Wow, that is amazing. It is exactly the same. Um, oops, um, is there a problem with pie charts? Okay, 18% uh, and then what's a pie chart? I, um, and, you know, so uh, it looks like it. Are there anybody, uh, anything in the chat? Okay, if you have opinions about that, you can put it in the chat if you want to mention anything uh, and join into this uh, uh, debate in a more serious way. Okay, so moving on here. Okay, so um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about what a, what a data science or a data science and data visualization uh, that looks like you would look like. And I'm going to talk about what's going on now in the world. Um, and here are some uh, faces, and these are just some of them. There are so many of some of the new data visualization influencers. Uh, Nathan Yao, um, who is a Chinese American, Asian American, uh, who went to UCLA, um, and uh, he's you know he's got a lot of stuff out that's really interesting. Um, I've included a German, uh, Charlotte uh, uh, Muth, whose name used to be Roast, um, Albert Cairo, who is from Spain, Brazil, and the U.S. and he is 48. And Charlotte, by the way, is is uh, probably millennial. Nathan, I think, is probably Gen Z. And then there's Yeshi Miller. Uh, Milner, who uh, is from the U.S., and uh, she is 31 years old. Okay, so I'm going to kind of focus on one of these, uh, and I cannot pronounce her first name, but, uh, you know, she goes by Yeshi, so let's use that. Um, she is an activist and organizer. She's from uh, Miami. She went to Brown. She graduated in 2012 in African Studies. Um, she has won the Forbes 30 Under 30 uh, Award. Um, she is co-founder and director of an organization called Data for Black Lives. Um, and her organization aims to use the power of data science to drive change for Black people and uh, using the tools of data science uh, another one of her goals is to fight bias in AI and to empower communities of color. And um, she has, you know, there are several videos out there of her talking about an initiative called Abolish Big Data. And I have a link there um, if um, you're interested in that. And of course, you can always 
go Google that yourself. Okay, so um, another um, way that we can look at making data, a, a data science that looks like you are uh, looking back at the data visualizations of W.E.B. Du Bois. And that is actually how it's pronounced, Du Bois. Um, and Du Bois um, it was, is really famous for a couple of different um, exhibitions. He did one of them in France, um, a World's Fair in 1900. And um, there is a, a book that came out relatively recently that I just have become addicted to and my students really love seeing uh, the visualizations from it. It's called um, Visualizing Black America, W.E.B. Du Bois's Data Portraits, The Color Line at the Turn of the Century. And it's got all of his visualizations from that period. And one of the interesting things about these is that there are examples of just about every kind of visualization that you can imagine. Um, and, um, and it's really, you know, really cool. But, uh, and he did them. They're, they're not done, you know, of course, obviously 1900. They didn't, they didn't have a computer. There was no Tableau, okay? Um, so these are done using watercolor and ink, and they are done manually. And of course, some of the lettering is uh, done uh, using um, uh, typewriters, but you know, these are all done by hand. And these were very large. Um, these were like a couple feet tall by a foot wide um, and or approximately um, and uh, on display. And you can, there's a lot of stuff out there about this um, to explore and I strongly encourage it. Um, these, uh, one of the things that these accomplished, which is really important, was debunking the then popular racist theories of social Darwinism. And, um, you know, and it also shows a lot of the changes post, uh, you know, the, the Revolutionary War and how people began to acquire land and, uh, you know, a lot of the discrimination. Um, there's another set of data, historical data, from Florence Nightingale. Um, this is her most famous visualization. Um, this is a diagram of the causes of mortality in the army in the East. Um, this was done during the Crimean War in 1858, and she used this visualization um, which is a coxcomb or rose graph to convince Queen Victoria that the main causes of death among the soldiers in the Crimean War was not battle injuries, but infection. And, uh, and that, and some of the infection, of course, from injury. Um, and uh, um, these were actually in, you know, she used to campaign for stricter cleanliness measures. Okay, and this is considered one of the 10 most important data visualizations of all time. Um, and then there is um, William Farr, who talked about her visualization in, um, uh, I mean, who helped her with this visualization. And he was a British physician. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, Candice, yeah, but we need to wrap it up. Pretty okay. Soon. Okay. So let, let me just move forward here. Um, did you want to do the poll or should we skip it? Uh, we can quickly do the poll. Okay. Oh. Thanks, for, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. People can go ahead and enter their answers. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Okay. Yeah, can you can you see I, the results? No, I can't. Um, uh, well, I can say that 69% didn't know either of them. Oh, okay, good. So I'm glad I brought them up. Okay, so let me just finish up this really fast, okay? Okay, so how, how um, can you make data visualization look more like you? Well, look beyond the data that you normally source source your own data, turn to influencers who are from uh, different populations to gather data, uh, mentor uh, young people who are, you know, uh, you know, who, who might bring different perspectives, um, always get the author's permission, and then always remain aware of the ways in which data, data scientists, and data visualization may be disregarded, uh, erased, and belittled. Okay, so that's um, the end, and I have uh, lots and lots of references. If you want those, um, I can, uh, you know, put that together and share it and email it to you if you give me, um, you know, your um, information. Okay, so anyway, um, 
Yeah, we are almost up to time and I'm sharing your email address in the chat. Okay. Uh, everyone can go ahead and uh, reach out if they want to. Um, let's see some of the Q&A. Um, we had a question um, saying, what about the LGBTQ representation in data science and visualization? Yes, that's also an issue. And uh, that's part of what I meant by um, uh, underrepresented populations. Okay. Um, I actually have materials in one of my courses that is, uh, you know, the example is from the LGBTQ community. It's about collecting data and census data. Someone okay. said that they have a poster framed in their office of ET. Uh, ah, <laughs> of course. Um. <laughs> uh, and yeah, if, if there are any questions, please feel free to add it in the chat. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. I think we are good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was truly enlightening to me as well. <laughs> thank you. And uh, this concludes our session. If you have any additional questions, for our speaker, you may send a direct message to them in Excel events or the email address that I've provided in the chat. Yeah, Excel events is good. So that would yeah. be good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.